Well, hello. Welcome to Crossroad Online. It's Sunday the 26th of July. Nearly the end of July already. Can you believe it? Oh, I know, it's gone incredibly quickly. Mm. We go straight on to birthdays. And first of all, there's one that we missed last week. Yep. And it belongs to Dave Jewett's. And it was a special birthday because it was his 70th. So we hope you had a super time, Dave, celebrating. And um, whatever you did, I'm sure you did. So happy birthday for July the 22nd. And then um, the next birthday is Julie Gosling. Happy birthday, Julie. Her birthday mm, is on the 27th birthday. of July. And Jackie Hunter, hello. Happy birthday. Um, her birthday is the 31st of July. Mm -hmm. And your dad's birthday. My dad. Yes, he yeah. is the 1st of August. I think Gordon yep. is the oldest person in our church, isn't he? Without asking some of the ladies their ages. Yes. Which you would never do. <laughs> yeah. So, and he's um, going to be 94 yay. on August the 1st. So happy birthday, Dad. Happy birthday, Gordon. Hope you have a lovely day. Yeah. So do you want to pray for everyone with a birthday? Mm. Yeah, okay. let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for birthdays once again. Father, we just ask your blessing upon all of these people. Lord, upon uh, Dave, we thank you that he celebrated his 70th. That's a landmark and a milestone. Lord, and we ask that for your blessing this coming year for him. For Julie, Lord, we just pray for Julie that um, she will have a great day. Lord, you, you, you blessed her last year um, and all those things she did to celebrate a special birthday last year lord and i thank you you're going to continue to bless her this coming year for jackie too lord we thank you for jackie for everything she does lord for, thank you for the energy that you've given her lord and we just pray that you will continue to bless her on her birthday and this year too lord and uh, finally to my dad as he celebrates his 94th that's a tremendous blessing from you lord and we thank you for that and father i pray that you continue to to bless him, Lord, to keep him well, Lord, and that he might see yet many more birthdays, Lord. So bless him, we pray. Bless them all, we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, today, uh, I don't think we mentioned where we're coming from yet. We're coming from Easy Bridge at Unborn. So we're sat on the seat by Easy Bridge at Unborn. You might remember a while ago, I talked about it during the commun communion service, I think, Did or you? during the communion time. Okay, yes. I'm not sure how easy it's going to be. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're right on a junction. And, and we've and had a muck spreader go past. It, yeah. <laughs> and and, and when we came out, the, the, the weather earlier was very breezy and it was quite cool. And now the breeze has died down. And the we're sun like, has come out. <laughs> oh my gosh. So it's we're sitting really here hot. and so but it is um, we're sort of partially shaded, but I've noticed the mm. sun is sort of glinting off my head and now we've got an aeroplane going over <laughs> so it really is happening here today it is it's quite busy today anyway we'll go with it and see if we can get this done but so just one notice the this this week so far and that is um next week is the first sunday in august and we talked about uh, returning to crossroad on the first sunday in august now there will be a short clip at the end of this video to let you know whether we're going back or not. This has obviously been recorded a few weeks previous, um, so there will be a short clip just at the end, just to say um, our plans, it's a bit 50-50 at the moment with the spikes that we've had recently in Leicester and other places, and um, so we're not in 100%, but um, we'll let you know exactly what's happening later. We'll also email everyone and put something on the website and the Facebook group and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, you'll so find out. One point, way or another, yeah. you will you will definitely find out. Now, do you remember um, a couple of weeks ago we started introducing testimonies on a Sunday? Well, today's testimony comes from Denise Atreba from Axminster. So here's what she has to say. I became a Christian about 50 years ago and um, I felt that it was um, right for me um, to ask the Lord into my life because um, I just needed a constant in my life. I needed somebody that I could rely on and Jesus did that. And I feel that I am his daughter, so I am precious to him. And also if I was the only person on this earth 
God would still send Jesus to die on the cross for me so I could be forgiven of my sins. That has provided me with um, my life, which is um, blessed. Um, I'm forgiven. He gives me joy in my life. And I, you know, I wouldn't be without him. Because God is such a part of my life, I just feel that like when you dress in the morning, you wouldn't go out without your shoes on, so you won't go out without God and the Holy Spirit in your life. That's part of your life, part of who you are, and I think that's um, how your life should be. Um, obviously, God has helped me with lots of situations over my life. I've been through um, fire, um, flood, divorce, uh, family um, bereavements, um, very hard things and God's always been there and helped me to be stronger because of it but the main one I think is when I had a heart attack um, I didn't think I was having a heart attack um, and I told that to the ambulance people that I was having indigestion but uh, they whisked me off to Exeter and when I got there they said my arteries were 99% blocked. Now I felt such a peace and I felt that God was near me at that time. I didn't feel afraid. Um, Ray and Jackie stayed with me um, at the hospital while they were sorting out things for me. And also, when I was on the ward, God also provided an orderly who was a Christian so that when I was doing my Bible um, readings in the morning, we used to come up and say, what have you got today then? So I was able to... Um, talk to him about that. So God has really um, provided for me all the time, all my life, but in special situations, he's, um, he's just there. I, I just know that I can rely on him. And I've got a favourite reading, which is Matthew 6, which you will all know is Do Not Worry. And I've used that in my life a lot. It's come up a lot and I can just find comfort from that. So um, don't worry, God will provide for you as he's provided for me. I've got a very full life, a very happy life, and I'm um, content and I know where I'm going at the end of it. So um, God in my life is, is the main, you know, the main man. Brilliant. Wonderful, absolutely yeah. brilliant. Every testimony been completely different, yeah. hasn't yeah. it? It's been really, really good. But again, it was lovely spending time with Denise, wasn't it? Just filming that. It was. <laughs> she <laughs> had terrible. <laughs> I know. It was the most terrible trouble. <laughs> we, um, her neighbour decided the moment we started filming to to get his jigsaw out and sort of cut up some wood or something. I don't know what he was doing but, actually. Um, it was it a bit was... of DIY in the back garden. It was the noisiest thing you've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. We had to keep asking so, Denise to start over and over again. But she's so a we real stopped and we, we started trooper. we stopped and stopped. <laughs> so I think we've got some I think it was yeah, brilliant. Well we done did. Denise. We so thank you Denise for that. It was special. Yeah. Really good. So today's subject is Forgiveness. Yes. Yes. We decided yeah. to go for forgiveness because we think that it kind of follows on from um, last week's session on prayer. Um, the point of forgiveness really is for our benefit, but we wanted to look into it a little bit further and, and to um, discover what God has to say about forgiveness. And as usual, we're coming at it from two totally different mm. angles. Mm. So True. you go ahead and okay. share what you've well, got first. Let, let's dive in, let's dive in um, with Psalm 103, straight off with Psalm 103. Um, and it talks about being forgiven of our sins because that's, if you like, the starting point of our journey as Christians. So it's an amazing Psalm. I'll just pick out some of the bits because we haven't really got time to do it all. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, 
who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And then down to verse 8. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. Should we just hang on a minute because the muck spread's going past again. <laughs> okay, at least yeah. we didn't get sprayed, so that's no. fine. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no, we can't detect any any, um, no, it's fine. Keep going. So we're fine. So, <laughs> and then just the last few verses, 10 to 15 of Psalm 103. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, he flourishes like a wild flower of the field. The wind blows over it and is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children. So there in that psalm is the tremendous promise of God's forgiveness and his forgiveness of our sins. All those things we've done wrong, um, he's prepared because of his loving kindness, because of his love, because of his mercy, he's prepared for, to forgive us of all of our sins and deal with them as far as the east is from the west. I love the dimensions of this psalm because as high as, as the heavens are above the earth. Well, so, they're, li they're limitless, aren't they? Because they well, go the heavens and and isn't just the atmosphere, is it? No. The heavens is like the stars and the moon and everything like mm, that. And galaxies. Yeah. And... For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so is his love. So great is his love for those who fear him. So that's a tremendous promise. Mm. And then it goes on to say, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions, our sins, from us. How far is the east from the west? Well, the further you go, the further apart they are. Mm. So just saying they will, never, they will never meet, they will never touch. Our sins have been removed so far from us that we will never ex have to deal with them again. We are forgiven, we have been set free, and we are separated completely mm -hmm. from them. So that's the state of the Christian. Somebody who's had their sins forgiven. Um, and being forgiven is an awesome thing. Mm. And because we are forgiven, then there's a little thing that we've got to do. Yeah, that's the tough bit. <laughs> that's, the, that's the uncomfortable bit that we've got to face because if we've been forgiven, then we also have to forgive. Yeah, I read, I read that um, a couple of weeks ago when I was doing the bit when we did the week on prayer. Right. And it's the bit between um, where Jesus is talking about prayer and the Lord's Prayer and before he goes on to fasting, which I also read, verse 14 of chapter 6 of Matthew. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. And the Apostle Peter asked Jesus a bit more about this because he, he wanted to know exactly how many times you had to forgive mm. your brother. And so there's a bit in Matthew 18, verse 21, when obviously Jesus has been thinking about this mm. and remembering what Jesus had said. And so he says to Jesus, um, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times because that's what was written in the Bible or in the Testaments yeah. that he was reading. But also seven times means a lot, means many. Yeah. 
Um, but seven he was, was taking a, it literally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how many? Is it just the seven times I've got to forgive my, my brother? And Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Or as some translations re, re, um, write it, 70 times seven times. Now, if my math is correct, that's 490 times okay. in a day. 490 times a day, you've got to forgive your brother. I've got two brothers. I've never needed to forgive them 490 times I in a day. I bet to forgive you. <laughs> I was just going to say that. It might have worked the, <laughs> the other way. You threw a but, car at one of your No, no, no he, he threw, threw, at me. A car at he you. threw a car at me. You've got, still got a scar I've on got your lip. I've got a scar on my lip from uh, that one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm confident they forgave you a lot. Yeah, but I'm, not, I'm sure none of us have had to forgive each other 490 times. But it just basically means it's limitless. Yes. There yeah. isn't a, There's there isn't no as limit. right, you've done it 490 yeah. times, this is 491 and you're done. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm not absolutely. forgiving you anymore. No. It just means it's limitless. There isn't an end to it. You just, ha you just yeah. keep on forgiving and you keep on moving onwards. Yeah. I mean, it, there's also, the point of forgiveness, I think, is not necessarily for the other person, but it's for yourself as much as anything else. Because if you don't forgive someone, it can really create a, a root of bitterness or anger or even resentment inside you that festers away and grows and produces all kinds of nastiness. Um, I think it was, it, what, did you say once in a service about not forgiving someone was like rat poison? Tell us about the rat poison oh, thing. What was yeah. that? Quote oh, it properly. Yeah, all right. It, it's just um, unforgiveness is... Um, like drinking rat poison and then expecting the rat to die. Um, because unforgiveness is the thing that kills you. It doesn't get vengeance back on the other person. No. It just affects you. Mm. J. John, mm. we, 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 uh, J. John posted something on Facebook this morning when he was talking about um, Ephesians 4, 31 and 32 which says this, get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Mm. And he said that actually the damage done by your unforgiveness to yourself mm. is probably far greater than the damage of the original sin that was done to you by somebody else. Mm. So unforgiveness only harms ourselves. Yeah. Even when it's something terrible's been done to us and it's not our fault. And you're ju and you're justified in feeling yeah. the way you do. Yeah. If you can get past that and get to a, a point where you can actually say I forgive, then that makes a huge difference in your personal life. Mm. We okay here. We're going to get run over. <laughs> I have never over. in my life. I, I spend quite a bit of time sitting on this bench um, because it's part of my cycling route, mm. and um, I have never seen a vehicle reverse around the corner with a trailer, and then the horse box come horse the other box. way. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, there is something. Really. There is something about reckon... us filming, isn't there? You yeah. know, when we were at Stone Barrow the other day, the police turned up. <laughs> well, they, well, at least we didn't get arrested. <laughs> Well, can I come at it from, a, yep. from another angle Go as well, it. please? Because um, I was thinking about forgiveness for yourself. And I think that there are times where we feel like we just can't be forgiven. That whatever we've done is just such a big deal. It's such an awful thing that we don't think people will forgive us. We don't think God would ever forgive us. And then those kind of thoughts allow the devil to start whispering things into your mind then that tell you mm. that you're not good enough um, that um, you don't measure up and that you've messed up so much that you've just blown it completely that there is no hope for you mm. and that's really common you mm. know a lot of people have felt that in their lives when you become a Christian I think religion has really killed Christianity in a lot of ways because it's added on a lot of things. Yeah. 
hang on a mo. We'll just wait for another tractor and trailer to go by because it gets a bit noisy. When you become a Christian, it really is as simple as asking God to forgive you for your sins and asking him to come into your life and to change you. That is it in a nutshell. Well, we read from Psalm 103 that we started with that that is God's plan and yes. it's his desire. It's his desire to forgive us. Mm. He doesn't want us to be burdened down with all those no, things that we've not ever all. done. In fact, I, can't, I didn't have a chance to find it, but it does say in the Bible, come to me, all of you who are burdened, and I will give you rest. And sometimes the burdens that we carry are our own making, but we just can't give them to God. We don't think that he can forgive us for some of those things that we're carrying. But I want to tell you today that he can and that he wants to. And that anything that's been added on by, I don't know, other religions saying you've got to jump through hoops and you've got to do this and do that to earn God's forgiveness is not true. It really is as simple as just getting quietly before the Lord and saying, I'm really sorry for this and I don't want to carry this guilt yeah. any longer and yeah. I want to be free from this. He desires to forgive you, but also he's given the way of forgiveness. Mm -hmm which is his son Jesus, Jesus yes. who took on board all of our sins, all of our unrighteousness, everything we've ever messed up. Mm. He's taken it all upon himself and made us completely right with God. Yes. Um, uh, God made, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, God made him who knew no sin to be sin so that through him we can become the righteousness of God. Mm. So we can be completely right with God in yeah. every way. So when Jesus died on the cross, he took all the sins of everybody that had been born, that was yet to be born, he took them on himself and he was found guilty on our behalf. Mm. So it is perfectly acceptable to come before God and to say, I'm really sorry for these things that I've said or the things that I've done or well, the things that I've thought about, but I want you to just take these burdens off of me now and give me a new life mm. and a new start. Because forgiveness is the key to having a new life in Jesus. There's freedom in forgiveness. Yes. It will let you out of prison. It will get you out of prison. Mm. You will lose the bitterness. You see, the Lord wants to put love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, mm. gentleness and self-control. He wants our lives to be full of those things mm. and not bitterness and rage and anger and unforgiveness and all those You've other things. You've got to just let go of those yeah. things. Yeah. Um, because then and it's, your it purpose is a constant in the battle. Lord is better, isn't yeah. it then? I mean, yeah. you don't, you're not, your brain isn't fogged constantly yeah. with just feeling guilty about everything all the time. Yeah. Shall we finish with one story? Yeah. Um, the story of Corrie ten Boom. Oh, yes. Yeah. And she tells, she's had an incredible encounter. Uh, the story of Corrie ten Boom, she was imprisoned into concentration camps mm. in Nazi Germany because she was, um, she was Dutch and she was a Christian and she was involved, her family were involved in smuggling Jews out of Germany and getting them to safe places to, mm. to rescue them from the Holocaust. And um, eventually she was found and she and her sister were put into prison. Her dad was also arrested, but I think he was, because he was such an old, frail old man, he was let out. But her and her sister were put into, in, into a concentration camp and um, they both suffered terribly. Her sister, Betsy, died um, in the concentration camp. But um, through, a, through a miracle, uh, Corrie ten Boom was released. There was actually an, an administrative error which meant that she was released. And then only days later, all mm. of the women her, in her age bracket in that camp were sent to the gas chambers. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, after, after the war, she went around telling a story. She wrote a book and she went around telling a story about how the Lord had um, helped her, saved her, and, and just... Um, and talking about forgiveness as well and then one day she was in Germany on a preaching tour and she saw in the congregation 
one of the guards from her camp. And she, um, she saw him and she, she knew, she instantly recognised him as the one that watched her shower as they would, had to come into the camp. They were showered he, and he just leered at her and mocked her. And, and then he was a particularly cruel guard in the camp. Mm. And after the meeting, he came up to her and he didn't recognise her. He didn't know who she was. But she, he said, uh, Fraulein, I want to say that I've become a Christian and um, your story means so much and thank you for sharing it. And isn't it wonderful that Jesus can forgive us um, for all the things that we've done, not knowing what he'd done to her. And he, he but he did say, um, I was a guard in a camp and um, can you forgive me? Can you forgive me? He asked. Mm. And <laughs> Do I need to I'm, get a tissue? I'm going to get emotional in a minute. But <laughs> in a minute, you already yeah, yeah. are. All right. But, but he, 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 uh, she, he, she said at that moment in time, all of the hurt, all of the embarrassment, all of the, all of it came flooding back. Mm. And she said to the Lord, I cannot forgive him, but I need you to forgive him through me. She said, I can lift my hand and shake his hand. That's all I can do. And as she did that, she was overwhelmed by, <laughs> she was overwhelmed by forgiveness for the man. And she said that that's the power of forgiveness. Even if we really struggle with forgiveness, mm. if we ask the Lord to help us, he will enable us mm. to forgive others. Yeah. And I think we'll stop there. I think before I get any more emotional, <laughs> we ought to stop got there. Tissues. Yeah. <laughs> you just must leave. Anyway, I hope that whatever we've said today has spoken into your lives um, because forgiveness is so important if you want to have freedom and if you want to move on in what Jesus has for you. It may be tough mm. and really difficult to do. But if you pray and ask the Lord, I'm confident that he will help you do it. And um, Well, can you pray then? The I will. Please. I will pray. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Father, that you are a loving, gracious and caring God and that you welcome us into your arms as um, blameless and completely right with you that we can stand before you confidently knowing that you have forgiven our sins but father we know that for some people it's really difficult to uh, forgive things that have happened to them and to be able to move past them so i just pray for anyone today that has been really affected by this that you will strengthen them and uphold them and show them a way through this situation that they may be facing in Jesus mm. name thank you for your love for each and every yes. one of us yes, and Lord. I just pray Lord Jesus that these words that we've spoken today will go out and will mm. touch lives and will transform lives mm. so that people can live burden and guilt free in the knowledge that Jesus loves them and he's forgiven them thank you Father God in Jesus name Amen Amen so that's it for this week where we are next week we'll tell you in a moment but mm. even if we are back at church next week these online videos these online on a sunday are still will going to be available you will yeah. still see our faces yeah. and um if, is that the you'll good be thing? fed up with us by then <laughs> i expect <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway we will see you next time mm. god bless All bye right. bye right now for the update we met as a leadership team on friday evening and have decided that we're going to come back in september and in September, we're going to meet fortnightly. We decided that August was too soon due to spikes in coronavirus in this country and um, others as well. And so um, September the 6th, that's when we're coming back. Mm. So that means that through the month of August, we're going to continue to do church online. And also we've got our weekly communion service, which you can access through Zoom. Mm. Uh, but things have been going on here in the meantime. Uh, thanks to Harry, to Graham, and to Jeff, and others who've been keeping this place in tip-top condition, 
um, ready for you to come back in September. But just remember to, to keep strong and to uh, keep building yourself up in the most holy faith. And don't forget that we are disciples who make disciples. Don't forget to encourage others and build them up too. Anyway, we will see you soon. Bye, everybody. God, God bless. bless.